the sun. Brilliant, powerful, giver of life. But this is the story of how the sun will one day become our enemy. If we are to survive, we'll have to leave the Earth. We'll need to seek out new homes and amazing new places. And change other worlds to recreate the Earth we left behind. In the far future, our sun will become a monster. It will burn all life from our planet, destroy entire worlds. And finally, our sun will even destroy itself. It's going to happen. One day our sun will die, and when it does, we'll go with it. It's time to think about the future. For five billion years, the sun has nourished the earth. It is the sun that provides the energy for plants to grow. It is the sun that makes life on earth possible. But that will change. Slowly, unstoppably, our sun is getting hotter and hotter. Once it gave life to us all, but what it gave, it can also take away. If human beings are to have a long-term future, we must leave our planet behind and search for new places to live. One day, our homes will be out there, somewhere in space. In the distant future, this could be our home. Out here in space, we'll have to seek refuge on new worlds where we could settle and live. The reason is, we have to escape from our sun. Some new worlds may be difficult to adapt to. Others may be very like our own. But what is it that makes our planet so special? And why is it so dependent on the sun? Here is the sun as it is today, in the center of our solar system. The Earth goes round it about there. And there are the other planets. The reason why our planet is the one with life on it is that it is just the right distance from the sun. Closer in and we'd boil, further out and we'd freeze. We live in a kind of safe zone that's perfect for life. The trouble is that zone is moving. The sun is getting hotter and as it does, the region where life can exist shifts further and further out. Ultimately, the safe zone will leave Earth behind. When it does, we'll be in serious trouble. Our planet will die.
This is how it will happen. As the sun burns up its nuclear energy, it will become hotter and hotter. By the time it's 5% hotter, plant life everywhere will be dying. Ten percent hotter, and animals too will begin to die. Fifteen percent hotter, rivers and oceans will evaporate, creating huge cloud banks, trapping more and more heat. In the far future, life on Earth will become impossible, and there's nothing we can do about it. What will happen to us then? Astronautical engineer Robert Zubrin believes he has the answer. He wants to find us a new place to live. The uh, only real choice that we have is to uh, grow, expand, become a spacefaring civilization, or to become extinct. Not only would we become extinct, but unless we become a spacefaring civilization and bring Earth life out with us into the universe, all life on Earth will become extinct. Robert Zubrin's goal is to make us a home on Mars. Today, Mars is cold and lifeless. Temperatures regularly drop to 100 below freezing and its atmosphere is 200 times thinner than our own. A person standing unprotected on the surface of Mars would be dead in seconds. Yet some scientists believe we could still learn to call this home. Mars is the only other planet in our solar system that has on it all the resources needed to support life. It has water. It's frozen to the surface as ice and permafrost, but it's there. It's got carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It's got nitrogen in the atmosphere. And if humans go to Mars and develop the craft of how to use these resources, then we can make Mars a place where human beings can sustain themselves. We can make a new world for our posterity. No species can expect to last long if it stays in the same place. In a very real sense, humans are not native to the Earth. We're not native to North America. We're not even native to Europe. We're native to Kenya. That's why we're tropical animals with long, thin arms, no fur. But humans were able to leave there and colonize the Earth by becoming creative. Man the inventor. That's how we coped with Ice Age Europe, and that's how we're going to cope with Mars and the planets beyond. In a remote part of Canada, Researchers have already been preparing for life as pioneers on Mars. Living in a space pod did prove difficult, but they coped. Zubrin is optimistic. We're ready to take this on, and frankly, if we shrink from this challenge, what it would really mean is that we have become much less than the kind of people we want, once were. We are much better prepared today to send humans to Mars than we were to send people to the moon in 1961 when John F. Kennedy started the Apollo program. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. And we were there eight years later. There is nothing in this that is beyond our technology. It's just a question of showing a little bit of moxie. For Zubrin, it's not the technology that's lacking, it's the will. But technology and willpower alone may not be enough. Just look at what we'd leave behind. This is our life support system. The plants that create oxygen, countless species of animal, 
How will we fare without them? Our survival depends on the living things we share our planet with. The air we breathe, the food we eat, all this is created by other forms of life. If Mars is to be our home, it'll have to be home to all of this as well. Fifteen years ago, we thought we knew the answer. This is Biosphere 2, a huge glass dome covering three acres of Arizona desert completely sealed off from the rest of the planet. The theory was that people could survive in it because the whole environment was self-sustaining. Trees would provide oxygen, artificial clouds and oceans would regulate the climate. But the experiment failed. Food rapidly ran short, and extra air had to be pumped in. On Mars, that failure would have killed them all. If we're ever going to call the red planet our home, clearly something's going to have to change. And the easiest thing to change may be Mars itself. It's an idea called terraforming. The aim is to transform a whole planet from a place where we couldn't survive to one where we could. NASA scientist Chris McKay believes we could turn Mars into something surprisingly like Earth. When we think about going into space, we tend to focus on humans. But in fact, it turns out that it's easier for plants and microorganisms to go to Mars first. They're going to be the first Martians. In Death Valley in California, Chris McKay is seeking Earth's most hardy creatures. Stone. Creatures that might be able to survive on Mars. That's our guys. These green smears are algae, microscopic organisms that can thrive even in the harsh and variable climate of Death Valley. You can see that. And they could thrive on Mars too. Sucking in its thin and unbreathable atmosphere of carbon dioxide and pumping out oxygen in its place. Except at the moment, even the algae would find Mars deadly. The first step to make Mars habitable, habitable even for the toughest little algae, is to warm it up a bit. Right now it's too cold and too dry for any type of life from Earth. Well, warming up a planet is something we know how to do. We're doing it on Earth. The pollution on Earth would be the medicine on Mars. It's a strange twist. The best way to make Mars a place we could live may be to pollute it. Here's how it would work. First, a spacecraft has to drop off the pollution-creating machines. 